I'm so glad that you tuned in today. And we're here today to explore the fascinating intersection of self-awareness, communication, and self-confidence. Today, we're focusing more though on that technology side and the mindfulness and media in today's di digital age. So I'm your host, Sue Jansen. I'm just so pleased that you're with us today. And I'm truly excited to introduce our new, our guest. She's a distinguished expert in the field. Her name is Dr. Gwyneth Jackaway. So ja Dr. Jackaway is not your ordinary guest. She is a digital wellness coach. She's a mindfulness educator and a seasoned media historian whose journey has spanned over 25 years in the realm of academia. So for the majority of her career, she has a problem. She is a me prominent member of the faculty of Fordham University, where she continued and contributed uh, significantly to the Department of Communication and Media Studies. Her work has consistently centered on the profound impact of technology innovation in communication on our lives. So what sets Dr. Jackaway apart in, is her unique blend of academic expertise and personal passion. As a devoted mindfulness meditation practitioner, she brings a keen and introspective uh, perspective or perspective exactly to her explore, exploration of how our rapidly changing digital digital environment is transforming our very essence as humans. We're specifically looking today at our children's experience. So today she stands as, at the intersection of two profound passions, mindfulness and media. So Dr. Gwyneth Jackaway is on a mission to empower students and to empower educators and parents with practical and actionable strategies just to cultivate Inter, uh, intentional attention admits, admits, admit, I can't even say my word today, the ever-present allure of digital distractions. That's what we're talking about, digital distractions. So get ready, ladies and gentlemen, for an enlightening conversation that promises to uncover the secrets to navigating our digital world with grace, with mindfulness, and, pro and purpose. So welcome. Dr. Gwyneth Jackaway, it's just so, so wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much for taking this time. And I just, we just have a, an 18 minute podcast. And so I want to just let you take over now and just share with us why you've come to the place that you are in today and why your passion is there for us and to benefit all of us. Thank you for your kind introduction. So as you mentioned, um, my training is as a media historian, and I spent many years on the faculty at Fordham University in the Department of Communication and Media Studies. My uh, academic research and teaching uh, has long focused on the impact of new media on society. So, and as a media historian, I looked, I've spent a lot of years looking at how other new media, not the ones we're using right now, but other ones like the printing press and the alphabet and the telephone and early film and television and radio, how life changed when those things came along. Communication is at the center of what human beings do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't have wings, we don't have claws. There's a lot of ways in which our bodies are not very well suited to surviving uh, in nature without a lot of assistance, uh, but what we can do is communicate with our powerful forebrains through language and now all of the various other technologies that we've developed to link our brains with each other, which is all, uh, it, it can be very powerful and there are downsides. Every new communication technology has brought some fears and concerns Believe it or not, when the novel was new in the 19th century, the paperback novel, people were worried that kids were spending too much time reading. So, you know, some of our concerns change over the years as new technologies come along. One of the things that is consistent is that there's concern about young people. Um, just a bit more about my background. Uh, on one channel of my life, I was teaching about media and on the other channel for a very long time, I didn't see them as connected. Um, I have long been a mindfulness meditation practitioner. And, um, you know, one supported the other, but I didn't see them as intertwined until about 12, 13 years ago. I live in Manhattan and, um, I started noticing people walking around the streets, 
looking at these devices. And of course on the subway and in the buses and in line waiting for the bank or wherever else people physically stand in line, grocery stores, I started noticing everybody is doing a screen meditation and suddenly it clicked for me that there is a powerful link between our habits of attention, which is certainly part of what mindfulness is about, right? Mindfulness meditation is about bringing us into the present and being actually here to experience what's really going on, not in the past or in the future. So mindfulness, our attention, and our relationship with um, communication technology. So there's a strong link and you know my first concerns emerged years ago and and what we've seen since then is that um people are spending a greater and greater percentage of their waking hours mm -hmm. looking at screens and this um cuts across all age groups um so my remarks today are not just about kids but of course the children are the future and their brains are developing the adult brain continues to adapt and change. Um, right. That years ago, it was thought that that is not true, but it it does. You can teach an old dog new tricks, although it is it is harder. But young people's brains are actively developing, and whatever we experience shapes the brain. And so, spending seven or eight hours doing any activity um, is certainly going to impact the brain. And there are many concerns about extended screen time use for young people. Yes. And so um, I left higher ed to leave the college classroom to try to make a bigger difference by bringing some of what I used to teach in the college classroom into people's daily lives so that more people have access to the kind of knowledge that tends to live only in classrooms. Mm -hmm. So among the various things that I'm engaged in um, is I support a company called Parrots, which has developed a learning app for, uh, which has developed, developed a parental control app for iPads and phones so that they can um, help their kids develop healthy, balanced technology habits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the idea of Carrots and Cake, the, it's the name of the company is based on that age old parental advice, eat your carrots before you have your dessert, do the learning before you play, um, you know, do your homework before you get TV time. So <clears throat> the idea of the app is first of all, it helps take the parents out of the role of the technology police, which can be very um, stressful and exhausting for mm. parents kids and parents get themselves into power struggles with their children, whereas actually the power struggle they're really having is with Wall Street, Silicon Valley, and Madison Avenue. And those are powerful forces with deep pockets who hire psychologists and you know create technology platforms that are by design addictive. Mm -hmm. I can Say some more about that, but I will leave space for you. Okay, well that that's a wide scope. That's your your knowledge and background is is very is expansive. So I appreciate that. I'm just going to go back a little bit about I've had conversations with parents here, and, and we're in Alberta, Canada, and not that we're different than Madison Avenue. We're just really small compared to this too, compared to you, but uh, we do have um, a large population here. And I was a special ed teacher for a while, and a, a conversation that I used to have, and I remember having with my parents, is about the brain development. And if you mentioned briefly, if you could just explain to us and, and define, like, I, I my understanding is that girls' brains and boys' brains are mature at a different rate or a different kind of mature or finish or developing. Can you just fill me in on that a little bit? Well, um, what I what I can speak to is not so much about gender differences, um, although there certainly are some. Um, it's a complicated question whether girls' brains actually develop sooner or whether we raise boys and girls in a different way and we expect girls to grow up faster. It's an interesting question. But um, the neuroscience that's relevant in terms of um, digital distraction and technology use 
among young people is that the prefrontal cortex that I referenced that helps us um, generate language is also the part of the brain that handles self-control, um, organizational skills, self-limiting, um, the uh, suppression of impulse behavior. That's the executive, that's the prefrontal cortex and that keeps developing until the mid twenties. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the rules are in Canada, but here in the US, people under 25 can't rent cars right. without paying a much higher fee and getting parents to sign off. And, and you know, the insurance companies have been onto this for a long time. Young people take risks. This is not a surprise. We know this, but there's a reason why they're not just being young and wild. They literally don't have the brain control, the self control yet because their brain has not developed sufficiently to so to say to an eight year old, just put the pad down and then to be annoyed with them because they resist or they have trouble with that. That sets both the parent and the child up for failure. The kid can't do it. The parent is expecting them to be able to do something that they can't, and then it's seen as oppositional behavior, or they, mm -hmm. and there's a punishment, and it's it's not their fault. They're literally not able to do that yet. You can begin to teach self discipline, but um, you know it's it's quite understandable why there are power struggles. Mm -hmm. and, tantrums and that's so among the various things that I teach about um, are it's digital wellness so digital wellness is based on the idea that just as we need enough sleep and we need enough to um, to drink you know water we need to be hydrated we need to have proper nutrition we need exercise we also need to be digitally well mm -hmm. if we think about some of the basic principles of wellness, right? You, you want a balanced diet. You don't want to exercise all day or only eat carrots, you know, <laughs> like that would be out of balance. You need a balanced relationship um, with our technology as well. So what I, part of what I love about carrots and cake, and which is why I um, help do parental education for them, is they're not anti-technology. These technologies are in our lives, they're here in our society, and you know what? Only more are coming. <laughs> so it's hard to believe that <clears throat> the social media that we take for granted now didn't even exist 20 years ago. Right. None of them. None right. of them. The only social media platform that existed 20 years ago was MySpace, and nobody's on MySpace anymore. So who knows what's coming in five or 10 years and who knows what devices are coming. Mm. So to block young people or to demonize technology in a sort of Luddite manner, you know, you might be able to control a child in the immediate moment, but eventually they're going to sneak off and find their way to it, or they're going to go to someone else's house. Or if you're really draconian and lock everything down, eventually they, they grow up and they'll do their own thing. So yeah. best to, um, help them learn limits from the start. And it's much easier to work with smaller kids who aren't yet um, on social media. So the right. way that some cake works is that um, parents can choose ahead of time which uh, learning apps they want to uh, install onto their iPads or phones. So it, um, it might be something that teaches another language, like Duolingo, or it might be something that helps a child with their math skills or their reading or them learn numbers or whatever stage of learning they're at. There are wonderful, wonderful learning apps available, many of them free. So the parent would download that and then add carrots and cake and you tell the app ahead of time, the child needs to spend, let's say, 15 minutes on Duolingo or 10 minutes on Khan Academy or whatever, learning apps the parents decide and then they can have some amount of minutes that the parent and child can decide together doing the thing they call fun and you know that would be the carrot of the cake part so and this is where we get into some more neuroscience so game the electronic games and social media um part of why they feel so addictive is because of a neurotransmitter called dopamine. So you've probably heard about this, this chemical dopamine. Uh, it's a neurotransmitter that's released when we're hunting and searching for rewards. Mm -hmm. 
So you can see it on the faces of people when they're playing a slot machine and you know they're gambling or you can see it on the face of a child playing a video game or not just children. It's that feeling of intense engagement and then you get a reward. Someone liked your picture. You leveled up in the game. You know, uh, I got that email. Whatever it is, it's a, it's a burst of brain chemicals that are it's designed to help us feel good and keep searching. And so that's why these things become addictive. There's no accident that there's you're constantly getting notifications. Um, and that's all designed to keep you coming back to the platform. Why? So that you see the ads. Why? So that they can track your behavior and send you ads for things that you're likely to like. Yeah. So that's why I say it's parents up against these large corporations because mm -hmm. They're not interested in the well-being of, of our kids. So that's why we need digital wellness. Families need tips on digital wellness. I know we only have a few more minutes, but I can give you some of those. Mm -hmm. um, but I also wanted to let you know that your listeners can have 60 days free of carrots, the Carrots and Cake app. Um, so if you go to carrotsandcake.com, all spelled out, the word A-N-D, carrotsandcake.com, and then um, they should use the code word each day to go with the name of your podcast, right? Living and loving each day. Uh, and maybe they'll end up loving each day a little more if they're not having power struggles with their kids. And well, that's just a sense of relief from a lot of a lot of parents just have any tool that will help them without being the bad guy, you know, because I it's understandable why you know we our kids are kids. And we want to make it as pleasant as we can and have that reward that they're happy with the, the outcome. That's so great. that's great. So, so Gwyneth, they can go. I do have in the show notes that your website. So I hope everybody makes sure that, to go there. And anything else that's like exciting for you that's coming up that you want to share or that you want people to know about? Um, well, I, you know, what I would like to do with my last few minutes is just encourage, you know, what I like to say to parents is one of the best ways that they can help their kids develop healthy screen time habits is to develop them for themselves. Because yeah. kids are watching us, so if you're telling kids, put down the phone, but you've always got yours in your hand or, you know, one foot away, and if you're checking your phone during dinner, they're, you know, they're watching. So. Sorry. Encourage families to have screen time, screen free meals, and have screen free activities as a family so that kids can see there's some benefit to putting their phone down, which this, is to connect with their families. Mm -hmm. There's lots of options there with different, different nights, can be different themes for the kids. Just to uh, just that mindfulness, I appreciate. Any other tips or tricks that you can share with the parents that might be something that they can kind of grab onto today? And yes. tip too, like right away. Keep phones out of the bedroom. Keep phones, yes. Keep, and that's for everybody, not just the kids. And But young people need sleep. They're growing. Their brains are growing. And if they are allowed to have their device in their room, they will be on it at night. And then they're not going to have enough sleep. That's, you, that's, that's important. And like you said, for not just for the, the kids, but for the uh, adults as well. That's right. Well, that is so good. Thank you so much. I just really appreciate you being here. I appreciate the time that you've taken. And I just wanted to share this because I've been having discussions with quite a few people lately. And I really wanted to just set the record straight and say that there is help out there and there is places for you to go to get assistance for this tough job of being a parent, especially when dealing with your kids and social media. So thank you. I, I, I respect you. I honor you for Thank you for being here. So I really appreciate it. And everybody, please go to her website, carrotsandcake.com. It's in the show notes. And you can get us some other really valuable information. So again, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. And I hope, yeah. Thank you so much, Kate. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk soon. Okay, bye.